Did you know that Childish Cambino covered a Tamiya song? You want to learn how to play that? I got just a thing for you. Hi, it's your boy Carrie Two Spoon. If you're brand new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell so that you're always notified when we drop a new video because I don't want you to miss out. All right. Did you know that Childish Cambino in a radio interview covered a Tamiya song? I'm going to show you how to play that song because, again, I like the arrangement, the simplicity of it, um, just how he did it. And then I'm going to show you some, some sauce. I'm going to give you a little bit more substance if you want to kind of play around it a little bit. But remember, the thing that I always want to drive home is discipline, discipline, discipline. You might be able to do all types of tricks all across the fretboard, but you want to be as disciplined as possible. So we want to talk about that. Never, never forget that point. I mean, regardless of how much I go up and down the neck of the guitar and can do all types of things, it's great, but you want to be disciplined as well. So let's just take a listen to the song. Um, the song is So Into You. All right, so let's listen. Simplicity of the chords that sit right there. Right, before we get too far into it, because I listen, it feels good. We can we can vibe. So before we get too far into it, let's let's <laughs> let's talk about what key we're in. So we're in B flat. So for those th people that are trying to learn theory, so we're starting on the two, which is that C minor. We're gonna go to the six with that G minor. We're gonna go to that five, which is that F major. So we're gonna start on that two, which is that C minor. So I'm not doing a full minor seven. I'm taking that middle finger off, whatever you wanna do. G minor. F major seven, or like a matter of fact, a dominant. And because again, I don't have a percussion player, I don't have anybody that's kind of playing pads or playing drums or whatever, I'm keeping the beat myself. So you hear me, hear me striking the strings to kind of keep that rhythm. And what I'm doing is a technique that I like, I play the bass string with my thumb, but I'm using my index finger and kind of to, to pick out various notes that are in the chorus. I'm not trying to play every note that's in the chord, but I'm trying to play stuff that so it rings out. So I'm using my index finger and my middle finger. Matter of fact, I'm not even really using my index finger all that much. I'm using more of my middle finger and my thumb. So I'm using that to kind of keep the rhythm. Cool. That's just the basis of the song. We stay in that same particular vein. We don't really do too much. We don't go too much outside of that, okay? So again, that's that C minor, G minor, F major. Now what you can do to add some sauce, like some different kind of colors and textures, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, but again, I wanna always try to make sure that I'm, I'm staying disciplined to the music and not getting too out there, because it's easy to do, because there's a lot of space and the chords don't really change all that too much. But this is a movement that I like, that I wanna incorporate a lot of times when I'm playing, when I feel like I wanna be like, throw a little bit out there, so I'm like, oh, I can, not necessarily you're trying to wow the crowd, but like for those musicians out there that are listening, like give them a little bit of ear candy. So it's like when I go off of that C minor, I walk up the bass note. So when I'm playing that C minor shape, I'm gonna go F, I'm sorry, D, E flat. And I'm 
keeping everything off. So I'm still barring that. Like I was barring if I was playing that C minor, I'm going to go D, E flat. G, that hammer on. And I do that hammer on with that middle finger. You don't do it every single time, but it's like a cool, subtle kind of like mix in the record to add a little bit more substance in there. So let's just play it again. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna implement that. And because again, we can move around in the music <clears throat> because it's simple. What I just did, that's a triad movement. So I wanna make sure I'm doing it within time because it's a small window. So that, a small window that you got to fit that thing in there if you can't fit it in that window don't do it because again it could be a train wreck and if you don't, you don't mind if you could just do me this solid please leave a comment let me know what you like what i can change what i can get better at but don't be mean and vicious and vindictive and i got feelings and i don't want you to hurt my feelings i'm sensitive i'm an artist just so i'm sensitive about my stuff so that's what erica by do i'm just i'm just quoting her but real real talk I want you to leave a comment because again, I go through the comments and I read the comments and I'm always trying to figure out things or things I can do to get better. Or if I'm really giving you a lot of information, I want to make sure that I continue to do those things because again, I don't want to stop not giving you the information to show you how to unlock the fretboard. Because again, I know the freedoms and the joys that you get whenever you play. So I want to make sure that you get those same things. So if you don't mind, if you could just leave a comment because I read through those things and I, I don't take it for granted, but let's go back into this lesson. I'm going to show you how you can fit that triad movement in this small window. Remember, with music, there's a window. It's like you're double dutching. You have to time it because if you don't time it properly, you'll get hit by the rope or you'll cause a train wreck on the music or just kind of fall apart. Or everybody look at you like, what are you doing? So just be mindful of that. So I'm going to show you how to squeeze that in there. Okay. We've got a small window. We've got to squeeze it in there. Right here. So that's the movement. So like. Adding the stuff that we just did, that walk up. I would encourage you to do like whenever you're like you can practice with the video of course but if you find a space that like okay you want to implement a new thing keep looping it I know it may be redundant and I know you may just get tired of actually doing it but the more you loop it the better it'll feel and the more natural it'll be for you to kind of pull off that move so the way that you're not trying to wait till the last minute to try to do it in a show or do it in a jam session or whatever it is if you're playing live and then you happen to fumble so if you do it like in your practice time, it becomes more natural. It feels second nature to you. So it's like. <laughs> 
Things like that make a huge difference. I, I can't stress the importance of really like just looping stuff like that. You'll find me in my own practice time. If you ever come and see me in my own practice time, I may spend 30 minutes just looping this. And I might start adding little small nuggets here and there. So the way I start to become more comfortable with the neck of the guitar, I know the limitations and capabilities of what I can try to do, what I can fit in that space. And I'm not waiting till a live moment to do it where I might embarrass myself or it may not pull off what I'm trying to do or may not play what I intend to hear in my head. So I want to try to practice it in my own practice time so the way I have it locked in. I cannot stress that enough. Don't find yourself just trying to speed through stuff, but really just take the time to really focus in and lock in. So this song that we went over today was Childish Gambino's cover of To Me Is So Into You. If you love the stuff that we're doing, if you're brand new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click that bell so that you're always notified. Also, too, if you're looking to go a little bit deeper and you want to just like really have me as your mentor, go to carriescamp.com and sign up. I would love to be your mentor and give you the stuff that's going to give you the keys. It's really going to show you how to unlock your fretboard. Um, like I said, again, I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. Don't be a stranger. Leave your comments. Don't be vicious because, again, I got feelings, too. But definitely I read your comments. So I want to see what you're talking about. And if I'm helping you or if I can change or if I can fix some things when I'm teaching, let me know because I want to help you get the what I'm trying to share with you. That's really intentionally what I'm trying to do. So have a good one. Love, peace and hair.